Hi stitching friends, my name is Bonnie Log Cabin Stitcher. Welcome to my channel and welcome to my sewing room. This will be my quilting number three video where I talk about the quilts um, that goes along with the companion video of the floss tube number three video. So floss tube was just a community that I found about a month and a half ago and got me into the love of cross stitch again after 20 years. So I have just immersed myself in learning from other ladies, getting inspired, and then jumping in and doing my own videos. So in this video, I'm going to share about five quilts that I inherited from my mother and just show um, a little bit about her work and share a little bit of the stories behind those quilts. So if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, I'm Bonnie Log Cabin Stitcher. And I would love to just share a little bit of my stories with you. And I value so much the time that you spend watching me. I have gotten so many amazing um, comments and encouragement. And this has just been a fun journey for me. It is a lot of learning. I am not techie by nature. So there is a lot that I'm learning along the way. So let's just dive in and I'm going to act as if you're a friend visiting with me in my sewing room and um, just want to share with you about this quilt behind me that I inherited from my mom. So my mom was an avid quilter, avid stitcher, avid gardener, and she taught me how to do um, how to do life simply, find joy, and um, learn stitching along the way. So she and my sister and I just shared a great love of stitching as well as gardening and we would share a lot of things along the way. So this quilt um, was in a quilt show and I believe it won first prize. Now my mom had an amazing quilt diary and when we inherited the quilts that we got that she made we also got the pages that went along with them and unfortunately I have some of those pages in a place that I do not know of at the moment, but it is somewhere in my sewing room. And I know I have a picture of her um, with this quilt and um, I can just imagine she was going like this and it had the first prize. So I know I will find that somewhere. And uh, when I do, I'll post that on Instagram. But I'm just gonna share with you a little bit about this quilt and how much she loved 30s reproduction fabric. So in this quilt, you can see that it is embroidery. Um, there is some crewel work and it is actually, you are not able to see the very top row and it was really hard for me to hang this and get the whole video going. So I'm not going to redo it. But if you follow me on Instagram, I will be putting some pictures of this whole quilt in there and even close-ups because it is an amazing one where she had all these blocks. She did all the embroidery work on it. And then she also hand quilted it. She um, loved hand quilting. And I think you can see a close up of that. And um, it's just so dear to me because of the love that she had for it. I traditionally like the darker fabrics. I like um, more traditional quilts, but this one to me is so precious because she made it. I remember it hanging on her sewing room wall and um, as she progressed in age, she developed Alzheimer's, and it it was um, it was a hard thing to walk through um, with her. My dad was amazing; he cared for her up until the very end, the last two weeks. Um, she was able to be at home with him and he cared for her and he will always be my hero for doing that. I would go and visit her as often as I could, but they were in Colorado. I'm here in Southern California. Um, but as she was progressing in her dementia, um, she had lost the ability to do quilting. Then she lost the ability to do stitching. Um, but what we would do is we would sit, they had this beautiful, we called it the big room. 
and they had this room and it looked out onto the backyard of their Colorado backyard, which also looked onto a river down below them onto pasture land beyond that. And before all the trees grew up, it was a lot easier to see the cows grazing on the pasture, but they had deer coming into their yard because the back section of the fence was off so that you could see down to the river and down into all that pasture land. So um, it was just fun. They had um, a lot of bird feeders and so uh, Mom and I would just sit in that great room and we would just look out the window and I remember towards the end I would bring out these quilts. She had several and I'm going to show you more. But we would just look. We could spend hours just looking at the fabric and she loved kittens and she loved all the little beautiful aspects of this 30s reproduction fabric. Um, and all the little details of it. So I love this because of that. It gives me very happy memories thinking of sitting with her and her even being able to enjoy this quilt um, towards the end. So this is one of mom's quilts and her prize winning quilt. Here is another one. My parents had a round oak table and my mom made a lot of tablecloths that she actually used um, and they are gorgeous. So she just cut the corners. So I have this and even though I don't have a round table, I still love having this and using it. And often I use it just as a lap quilt. But you can see the details. If you're not familiar with 30s reproduction fabrics, you can see that they are just kind of goofy, um, goofy fabrics. And let's see if we can find some with the kittens that my mom loved. Um, there we go, there's some more. Um, just little tiny motifs in there. Um, but you can also see the embroidery that she did. So hand quilted, so she hand quilted and she did the hand embroidery. So I had in my um, floss tube number three video, I showed some of my embroidery and I tended to do, I tend to do um, tiny stitches, mom did larger stitches, but I love I love this and I love all the French knots and you can see the details of that, the, the details of those French knots and the embroidery and then just all the hand quilting in there. There's those little tiny rabbits. She loved those and the kittens the best. So this is just a fun, beautiful quilt. Um, again, a 30s reproduction one that my mother made and it's so neat um, to have the labels on here um, that she had made. So. Just really neat labels and just neat memories for me of that quilt. Here is one, um, and I think of all the quilts that she made, this one I treasure the most. And I treasure it so much because I have little coffee stains on there. Um, and I do not want to wash it because um, I, I think of her touching it last. And for whatever reason, if I wash it, it would take those handprints off. But again, these are the embroidery. And um, this is not as special because of the front of the quilt, but it is beautiful and it is fun. Um, but I had years and years ago, I had decorated my house in blue and mauve. Those were the days, 80s and 90s. And, um, and so blue and mauve was my thing, florals on the walls. And then I changed. But as mom was aging, she had forgotten that I wasn't so much into blue and mauve anymore. So when she made me this quilt, it was so funny because um, she was just so excited that she had made it in blue and mauve to go with my house. Um, and I just loved that she thought of me and that she made it. And I can imagine just her stitching on it and thinking of me and the joy of having it come to me. But um, what I treasure most about it is a secret compartment that she built into the back. Now, as I'm looking for it, I'm seeing all the little drips of coffee. Um, and again, my favorite thing is coffee. Here we go. Um, here is her secret compartment that she built into it. This is her quilt label. So this is a pocket that she built into the quilt. Let's see if I can undo it. And you can see into this little secret compartment and what she has in here. She wrote me notes and I still have them. Of course, of course I still have them, but they're in here in this pocket. And that's what I treasure so much about it. 
So she was a note writer and um, I treasure, sometimes I'm still finding notes from her and um, I treasure them so much. So let me pop my glasses on for a second. I'm not gonna read you the notes. Um, I'm not gonna read you all the notes, but um, uh, it's so fun. Um, here she says, so she purchased most of these, they are real 1930s fabric squares. She purchased them in a quilt guild rummage sale years ago. So a lot of those are not reproductions in that quilt that I just showed you. They are actually real fabrics. And so she was showing me, these are some of the real um, 30s fabrics. But it is so fun because here she wrote a note to me. It says, I hand quilted this silly quilt for you while listening to the complete story of the Mitford series. Um, and then she says, Dooley says, hey. So if you have not um, listened to or read the Mitford series by Jan Karen, I would like to recommend you to do that. Um, listen while you stitch. Um, and I really, I love, um, I now have audiobooks, And so I love listening to the Mitford series while I travel back and forth right now. I'm um, I travel to Colorado to visit my dad, um, or I listen to it while I stitch, and I love listening to audiobooks. So the Mitford series is awesome. Dooley is awesome. And um, so that is my treasured quilt with my secret compartment in it. And let's see what else I have. Here is another, and how long? Wow, this is going to be a shorter video, so that's good. Um, this is another awesome quilt that, let's see how I can show it. Another awesome quilt that my mother, with the help of her friend, Mary Ross, um, repaired. So this was one that she had given to her from someone in her quilt guild because they knew she loved these fabrics, but it was in disrepair. And so she had her friend um, help her figure out how to repair. I rem she had told me at the time but um, those fabrics to me are just amazing, um, these old fabrics. And my guess is, I want to say, well, I'm not even going to say because I don't know. Um, but my mom repaired and hand quilted this quilt top. And she had it in her sewing room for a long time. And then she passed it along to me so that I could enjoy it. So um, this... This is just amazing and it just shows to me my mom's love of old 30s fabrics and even so much as restoring. So just love the fabrics and again just love the workmanship. If you could just see how precious those fabrics are. And, and again they're not usually the fabrics that I would choose um, but they are precious in their own and the colors and um, just the love that my mom had for those fabrics and all the quilts that she made with them. And I actually inherited a lot of those fabrics as well. And I'll show later a project that my friend, um, also my mother's friend, Judith and I were working on as we split those fabrics up and, and made quilts with those fabrics. Now, here is another quilt that I wanna share with you. And um, this one, so you can see, there's a lot of workmanship in this, um, both the, the embroidery and the cruel work and the handwork, and it is, it is a beautiful quilt. Now, I have another quilt, and um, I'm going to show it to you, and there is a story behind it. Um, so this is a quilt, this is one of my mom's simpler quilts, and it's all wrinkled, because it has been in a box waiting to go to my niece, Emily. This is gonna be her gift, um, and it's my mom's quilt, and it is, yes, it is a very simple rag quilt, um, terribly wrinkled right now, um, but I had washed it and packed it away. But the story behind this um, is precious to me. So on my last trip, uh, in June to go visit my father in Colorado. Um, it's, uh, I do it in a drive, I do it by myself, and I do it in one day. Um, so I take a 12-hour drive and 
um, drive from the Inland Empire, Inland Empire of California to, um, to Colorado. And I actually enjoy driving alone and I listen to books on tape and, and just enjoy the beautiful scenery along the way. But there's a lot of emotions. Every time that I drive into the town um, of Montrose where my parents lived and where my dad now lives alone, um, I always end up crying because I'm missing my mom so much. She was my best friend. And um, it will be in November, it will be six years that she passed away. And it's always an emotional trip. It's awesome to see my dad. And now I love spending time with my friend Judith. Um, and I hear stories of my mom from her and, and then it gives me great joy. But I usually bring something with me along the way um, to comfort me and give me courage. And so this quilt came with me on my last trip. And as I was driving, um, I just kind of pulled it out of the tote that I had it and I just had it on my lap and I was just holding it and rubbing it um, because the chenille part is really soft and I was just enjoying having it and thinking about my mom and I just had this thought that it's time for me to pass on this quilt and I thought no I love it um, and and I decided it was time for me to pass it on to my niece Emily um, and yeah, yet I still have it because I need I need to send it to her. But this quilt has a lot of meaning to me. So for you ladies that may not be so much of um, quilters, but maybe you want to put a simple quilt together to give to someone special, do it. Um, this quilt has a huge amount of meaning and I'm not going to cry as I share this with you, but, um, my mom made this quilt and she, she loved it. She, I don't know how many quilts my mom made, but it seems like this was her favorite quilt and, um, she liked light things. So usually these rag quilts are traditionally made with three layers of fabric. She didn't like heavy things. So this has just the back flannel, and the front cottons and some of these cottons I gave her they're not high quality cottons they're just simple cottons and so she had this and she loved it and she treasured it and um, at one point she was ready to start passing some quilts on and um, so this was several years before she died and she was going to be making a trip to see my brother and his family and I said what if you give this quilt to Emily um, she would love it um, she was much younger then she loved pink and my mom said no no, that's, that's my, my special quilt. And I was like, okay, mom. Um, and it surprised me cause I thought this, this is not one of your prize winning quilts. It's just a rag quilt. Um, but this was her treasured quilt. And then towards the end, um, she slept a lot. And as many people do when they're ill and she always, <laughs> I'm not going to cry. She always cuddled with this quilt. This was her cuddle quilt and she loved it and she had it with her and so this when uh, when I'm missing my mom I wrap up in this quilt and I cuddle with it and um, this is another special quilt of my mom's because she loved it so much whereas the one that she made with the secret compartment she gave it to me and I loved it so much because of that so that's why I wanted to encourage you ladies that you do not have to make um, intricate, complicated quilts for someone to love it and treasure it. You just have to make it and you have to give it to them and they will treasure it because it's yours and you gave it to them. Um, so that's my story about this quilt, which will soon be Emily's quilt. Then, whoops, it fell down here. Towards the very end, my mom was able to do some crocheting and she loved the idea that she might have great grandchildren one day. So she made a lot of small crocheted blankets. And as she was losing her ability to stitch, um, she kept stitching, but the blankets didn't always come out square. Um, and sometimes they were very long and skinny, but I have them saved for, for those maybe great grandchildren that she would have had um, that are not that are not here yet but there is this one tiny one that she made and it is so soft she loved light colors I don't even know what kind of 
um, yarn this is, but it is very soft and it is very squishy and it's very small. And um, so I decided to save, um, I saved it for a while and then I thought, good, good grief. Um, I might never have grandchildren and I don't want this to just languish. So I've got a little fur baby. So I've got my little Riley and um, he's a little Chowini, so a little Chihuahua wiener dog. And if he curls up, he could fit within this size of a blanket. So this I leave out um, for him to use. So it is also kind of funny. And I was laughing and saying, Mom, you would love this little Riley because we would often talk about quilts that people would make and give as gifts and then that quilter would go and see that the recipient of that gift of a quilt had given it to their dog to lay on and it would be in their dog bed. So that was just kind of something my mom was like, oh my gosh, I hope that never happens with any of my quilts. So. It was kind of funny on finally deciding to let my Riley use this as his little dog blanket. Um, but I kept thinking, oh, mom, you would just adore my Riley if you knew him. So this is Riley's dog bank blanket. But kind of Riley, my dog, is kind of like my mom's great grandchild. So anyway, that's the story of that. And is this is a much shorter video um, than normal. But if I could also share with you another story. So um, this week we got to spend some time with my mother-in-law. It was my mother-in-law's 80th birthday on Wednesday and we got to spend time with the family and we went to the Wild Animal Park in Escondido, um, which is now called the Safari Park. I forget, it's changed its name. A lot of it is closed down and it was not very crowded at all because of COVID. And, even though it was very hot outside, um, it was mandatory to wear our masks all the time. So it was a little bit hot and sweaty and hard to breathe, but we really had a good time just celebrating my mother-in-law and spending time with her and um, just being together with extended family. And there's a tradition that we have in my immediate family that we developed from two books that um, that we had gone through probably about 20 years ago, and I wanted to share those with you. Um, there's a book called The Blessing by Gary Smalley and John Trent, and it is about five ways that you can pass a blessing on to your children. Then there's another book called um, The Five Love Languages, and that one's by Gary Chapman, so another Gary, and it is about five types of love languages that we feel so we can feel a love language and it is just a way that we feel when someone does something we can feel a greater amount of love and I may not be explaining it that well but it's just been a part of our life for a long time so when we were raising our kids we got to know our kids love languages um, my husband and I got to know each other's love languages and I know my love languages, but I wanted to actually, I actually looked it up because I couldn't find my books. They're in the garage somewhere. But I just searched what are the five blessings and what are the five love languages. I had remembered those. Um, and this is what I'm going to share about something that we did on my mother-in-law's birthday. So the five ways that we can hand blessings onto our children um, or other family members or friends is one, meaningful touch, two, a spoken message, three, attaching high value, four, planning a special future, and five, an act of commitment. So I looked, and you can get the, um, the book, The Blessing, used for five bucks. Um, so I would really encourage you to get that. It was a great book um, and something that really helped my husband and I in our marriage as well. Now, the five love languages, I want to read them to you um, so I can tell you what they are exactly because um, sometimes they get different in my head. One of them is words of affirmation. Another one is acts of service. Another is receiving gifts. Another is quality time. And another one is physical touch. So we primarily have one love language and a secondary love language. So that means when people, when my friends, when my family 
when they are doing one of these five things, I feel that love even if they don't say, I love you. I know that my primary love language is words of affirmation. And that is one of the reasons why I wanted to start doing these videos, especially in the floss tube arena, because I had seen all the comments that ladies would leave and they were so encouraging and uplifting. So of course, of words of affirmation, I thought I want in, I want to do that and I want to share my passion and love of stitching as well. So when I get people leaving comments and they're encouraging, it's just like, oh, words of affirmation. I love that. My second love language is acts of service. So right now, my husband primarily and I are restoring our old 1947 log cabin. That's why I'm called Log Cabin Stitcher, but also because I love the log cabin quilt block. So he is up there totally redoing our bathroom from scratch, and I am hauling things up there and purchasing things and doing that. But whenever he does acts of service, even if he does the dishes for me, that feeds my love language. I know his love languages. And so when I do those things, I know that I am filling his love bank. So that would just be a neat thing to, to get in your toolbox on being able to be an amazing spouse, um, a child, um, a parent, just to be a good friend, to know those love languages and also to be able to pass on the blessing. All that being said, in our home, we also have a tradition. We started it out by calling something Cheers, and that was when we had a working fireplace, and we had our little kids. We would get that Martinelli sparkling cider. We would get it in wine goblets, and we would sit on the floor. It had to be on the floor, and we would sit in front of the fire, and we would just go around, and I think we started it probably on New Year's, and I believe, because it was so many years ago, I believe the first thing we did was say, let's close out the old year, start the new year, with saying things that we appreciated about that past year. And then after one person said something, we'd all sit together and we'd clink our glasses and say cheers. And so we ended up just calling it cheers. Even Martinelli's had the name of cheers. Then we started doing it for other occasions, Christmas, other holidays, and then we did birthdays. Then we kind of moved to, instead of doing it on the floor, we also, the fireplace is not working right now, we would go around the table, especially on birthdays, and we would now do what we call verbal blessings. So when someone has a birthday, almost always we remember, we go around and we each say something that we value about that person. And um, sometimes we'll say cheers, sometimes not. Lately we haven't. But that's just a way that we celebrate and those are words of affirmation and just letting them know why we appreciate them. And it's also giving them um, great value. So it's kind of melding both the blessing and the five love languages. So when we were spending the day with my mother-in-law, um, and this being her 80th, um, I, I was just thinking the day was fun, but it was also about us. We were all enjoying being there. But when we were at dinner and I knew that it was going to be over, I just thought, would this be neat to, to give words of affirmation and, um, verbal blessings to my mother-in-law? And I am, you know, it was my, my husband's family. And so I went over to my sister-in-law who was kind of one of the ringleaders of this party and the fun. And I said, what do you think? Um, how would your mom feel if we did this? And she said, oh yeah, it's like we did cheers for Kurt. So Kurt had a birthday years ago. I totally forgot with Kurt's family. And um, we went around and we did cheers to Kurt. So that's how my sister-in-law remembered it, cheers to Kurt. So we went around and we did verbal blessings to my mother-in-law. And it was, it was, um, it was special. And it really makes you put into words what you appreciate about somebody else. So let me encourage you. Would that be a fun thing to do in your family? Whether you call it cheers or verbal blessings or, or just speaking um, love and encouragement and uplifting to someone in your family. Life is short. Um, life is short. 
and life is hard. So that would be a, a very special way to just um, one of our traditions in our family I would love to share with you. The other thing that I love to close out these videos with is just the concept of finding joy nevertheless. That was something my mom and I shared, um, even especially um, during her times of illness and um, when the joy was often robbed from her mind because of the Alzheimer's, we would just talk about joy nevertheless. And so that's what I love to share this and encourage you to find joy nevertheless. And then I would also like to share something special with you. Um, I closed out my Floss 2 video 3 reading a Bible verse and also sharing a short devotional, devotional from this. This is the Billy Graham Hope for Each Day um, morning and evening devotionals. Um, and whatever your beliefs, um, this year has been hard. 2020 has had one challenge after another and it's not over yet. Um, yet we can find joy nevertheless and um, this is what I would just like to share with you. Um, just simply the verse that was from this devotional. And it's from Romans 15, 13. I don't have my glasses on. But it's, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. So I would love just to share that with you. And I would love to um, encourage you just to share love and hope and encouragement with somebody else um, as soon as you can. And I pray that you will have joy in your life nevertheless. Thank you guys so much for watching.